I want to talk about uh, listening, the importance of listening, and also I uh, want to talk about the importance of counseling. Counseling is very helpful in evangelism and in raising up people's spiritual life and in communicating with family members and also husband and wife communication. <coughs> All very helpful. If you want to be a successful communicator, you need to learn listening uh, and counseling. Uh, it's very important. The difference between counseling and teaching or instruction is that counseling, you listen to the person and respond to what the person says and respond to the feelings, to the, uh, the needs, the, or the underlying problems behind the person. So it's, uh, just listening. Uh, that you will listen to the person's what when they say something, what is behind it. And this is something that needs a long time to learn. It takes a long time to learn. I was in a seminary and I took two counseling courses. But I did not learn it. It was later, in one year of uh, chaplaincy training program. And then I, uh, we were given a lot of uh, uh, practical training. And then response from the teacher. And then I realized I was not listening. I was just teaching. Uh, why is teaching not so effective? <laughs> Teaching is effective when the people are willing. But in order to open up the heart of a person, in order to help him solve his problems, uh, to change a person's perspective, we need listening. We need to listen to the person and see the underlying problems and feelings and then respond to it. What, but most people, they just hear someone say something and then they'll say, you should do this, you should pray to God, and then it will be solved. Uh, uh, you know, that there is a misconception. Just teaching them will change them. If they are willing to change, they will have changed already a long time ago. And also, um, some people also have this miscon misconception that praying will solve all the problems. Now, perfect praying would solve the problems. With perfect praying, the person is changed by God in his daily life, then it can, it can uh, change the, all the problems. God will guide us to change all our problems. But for many people, they just, uh, you know, they just pray, okay, pray for me. Uh, then my uh, marriage problem will be solved. And it just, and then the pastor pray for him and pray for God's uh, change the marriage situation, it's not going to change. Because his behavior is not changing, his way of looking at his marriage is not changing, and all this needs to be changed in order for the marriage to change. And now, if I use this illustration, if this represents someone at a lower level, and this is the level you want him to be, you just tell him, pray more, obey God, love your wife. He won't do it yeah. because if he has done it, if he had, you know, if he has done it when he heard the uh, word of God, he would have done it already. But he did not because there are resistance inside, and we have to have listening to go inside a person. What is difficult for him? Why is it difficult for him to to love? Why is it difficult for him to to uh, forgive his wife? And so when you guide him, guide him step by step to change. And that's counseling. It's also counseling makes people feel accepted. Like evangelism, if you just tell them there is heaven and there is hell and there is God who loves you and help you, just hearing it, he, won't, he, doesn't, he doesn't feel our love. We need to listen to them and respond to the needs that they will feel the love of God more and our love more. So in listening, we listen to the content, the way of expression, how he talks, his emotions, his body language, uh, his emphatic voice and action of the, counsel, uh, of the counselee. And also, um, so the counselor would know the condition and the needs of the person without judging. It's very important not to judge, not to condemn, and not to be emotional. 
because of that. And concentrate the listening and do not try to find a solution. It's just to discern, the listening, discern. Discern what is behind the person. What is underneath the person. So last night when I listened to him, I you know, heard the underlying unhappy feeling and then the hurt feeling and then try to solve that. And then to accept the counselee's weakness, uh, his sins and emotions and foolishness without criticizing. Uh, because it's very, very easy for us to, you know, to condemn the person, to criticize the person. Uh, so this is something for us to practice. Now, um, is there anyone here today who is willing to come out and demonstrate, uh, demonstrate listening? Yes, yeah, I'm just saying my past experience that I had uh, is something that happened in my family. In your family? Yes. Uh, what happened was this. Uh, we, were, we were gathering, we were together. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then I was, uh, my sister, she has done something which is, which is wrong. Okay. My younger sister. So now I, I was just being told uh, of what has happened. Yeah. Okay, from there, okay, I was just, I mean, I, mean, I was just surprised and shocked. Then I was like, ah, I mean, I was just, I, I mean, I was, for, for, for that time I was just shocked. Like, I, I, I didn't say anything. I just said, what? You, mean, you were surprised when yes. she did something wrong at that time or before? Okay, the thing was this, okay, like I was being told of what has happened. Okay. Yes. So now in the midst of that, I was, I was like, I was very surprised okay. to an extent that I was, I was just shocked. I just said, ah, you mean, you mean you did that? You mean, yeah, okay. I was just surprised like that. So she felt bad, my younger sister, she felt uh, really bad. And then she was, she was crying. Maybe she didn't expect like, I'm going to be shocked like that, like very okay. disappointed and stuff. So now, uh, my mother, because of emotions maybe, uh, she just thought, because she saw my younger sister crying, she just thought like, I see a bad way to hand. Uh, what was this? Mm -hmm. What did you just say? Okay. Did you get the last sentence? Okay, I was saying that, um, okay, my mother. Your mother? Yes, she was, she was very emotional when, when she saw my, my younger sister crying. Okay. So now, she made a conclusion that I might have said something to my younger sister. But she did not hear what happened, right? Yes, did my... Did she hear? Mm -hmm. Did she hear what... Your, uh, what? No, my mother, she didn't hear what we were saying, me okay. and my sister. Because me, I was just surprised. I was like, I was just surprised. I didn't say, didn't say a word. Okay. I was just shocked. So what happened was, my mother, because she saw my younger sister crying, she thought like I, I said a dead word. You get it? Yeah. Like I've said a dead word to her. So now from there, like my mother was just responding to me without even knowing what has happened. Like she was saying, ah, Okay, leave the, 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 the young girl alone, leave, leave her alone. My, yeah, she was telling me to leave my younger sister alone. Yeah, saying some, some other ways that I didn't have even have time to listen to. So, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so, okay, so with that, I end, okay, I ended up even, even moving to my bedroom and then I, from there I just, I just said, ah, let me just rest. I just went there just to take a nap. So, with that I was just thinking like, my mother, she felt like I've said something, but in the actual sense, I didn't say anything, and she even says, says she has made a conclusion of me, like how could I say that, and then, like now she's saying that even you, this, 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 tomorrow you do something like this, and stuff like that. So then, with that, because I knew like I didn't say anything, it was pinning me, even though I didn't have even the, the chance to talk to her, like, no, I didn't say anything. It was just, I think, about three days after. That's when now, uh, actually it was my grandmother who was asking me like, yeah, what did you say to your, to your younger sister? Then I was able to explain to my grandmother that, actually I, actually I didn't say anything. I was just surprised. So, because my sister saw me very surprised, so she, she, couldn't take, uh, she couldn't take it. So now she started crying. So actually I didn't say anything. Okay. So yeah, so my, my grandmother was able to understand. Then after some time, my mother, that's when now she, she actually knew that I, I mean, I, I, I've never said anything. 
But during that time, when she thought I've said something, she was very emotional, even against me, more like she's angry towards me, you know, how sometimes mothers are, like when they're protect, they protecting a younger one, you know, like they're very defensive. So she was very defensive to an extent that she was, now I'm taking me, as if like I've said something wrong, but which I didn't say it. Did she continue, your mother continue to be angry with you or just for that few days? Yeah, just for, yeah, for those few days. But, um, okay, truly, 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 okay, let me say this. Like for that moment, let, let me say for that day. Because from then we have never had the time to talk about it, me and my mother. So I don't know if she was angry, but even if she was angry, she has never showed it to me after, after that day that uh, she, was, she, she was angry or something. Yes, she's never showed me. But during that time, she was very angry because of the ways that she said. Okay. Yes. Now, but after that, did your, how did your mother treat you? Uh, did she continue to think that you hurt your younger sister? Um, okay, well, I think uh, before we talked about it, she thought like, uh, yeah, I think she, she didn't, she was hurt, I think. I think so. But after we talked about it, and then she knew, that actually I didn't say anything. I think that's why now she was free. Okay. Yes. Now, um. Okay, now, could you hear... Let me ask you now. Could you hear... He was angry. Now, anger, angry. Can you be sure he was angry? Do you know for sure he was angry? Or disappointed. Disappointed, <laughs> yes. Disappointed. Uh, can you be sure he was angry? When you are accused of falsely, what comes, you know, hurt is anger first. Okay, now, I'm asking this question. Do all people respond with anger? Now, did you respond with anger at that time? Um, okay, for me, for me it was just pain. Okay, now the reason, there's a reason I ask this. Not everyone mis uh, respond to misunderstanding with anger. People respond with different feelings. Can you describe some possible feeling where people are misunderstood? What could their responses be? Misunderstood. Normally it's pain. That's the first thing. Pain? Uh huh. Yes. It actually, now there are uh, five main feelings. You can write them just down. Okay? Glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed. So this is easy to remember. Yeah, glad, glad, G L A D, glad. Glad, glad means happy. No, you think about feelings. What's that five thinking? To what? With the five feelings that humans have. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed. The five feelings that humans have. So, now each of these are a category. Glad would include happiness, uh, happy excitement, you know, and then sad include sad depression suppression you know mad would be anger frustrated afraid uh, fear and um, I guess it's fear and then uh, ashamed also would include guilt okay now I just talked about the five feelings that people have and each person has a tendency to respond to certain things, unpleasant things, with uh, one of the five or two of the five. That generally people have a tendency. Some people, when something happens, they have a tendency to be sad. Now, glad is you know the positive emotion. So when there's something unpleasant, it will be usually the one of the four. Now, some people respond with sadness when he's hurt, when someone is hurt. Mad, some people respond with anger. Some people respond with afraid, afraid that 
oh, uh, will my mother dislike me from now on? So it could be fear. And a shame would be, you know, some people say, oh, it's a shame of me that I hurt my sister. So the five feelings. So it could be sad saying, oh, my mother now doesn't like me. Mad, anger, why did she misunderstand me? And then afraid, afraid that the mother does not like me anymore. And ashamed that, ashamed that I've done something like that. What I want to say is, each person responds to negative things in different ways. Some people respond with fear, some people respond with anger. It's, each person is different. Sometimes you can have a mixture of the uh, four feelings, but each person is different. So we might, some people might respond with anger. It doesn't mean other people respond with anger. We have to understand this point, very important. That, um, like for me, I seldom respond with anger. That's not my personality. I seldom get anger, angry. That's my personality. I, have, I might have a tendency to fear, to be afraid the person doesn't like me, or afraid to of offend the person. That's my tendency. And each one of us has a tendency. You need to understand what are your tendencies. That, you're, uh, that you have the tendency to have which feeling. And you can think for a moment. I want to say this, that same situation, different people can respond different ways. For instance, someone is offended, someone says something negative to a person, and then one person can respond with sadness, oh, he doesn't like me, he doesn't want me, he rejects me. And that person will respond with anger, and then another person Afraid, oh, he doesn't like me, he won't like me. And then the fourth person can respond with shame. Oh, I, I'm just useless. I have, I'm no good. In people's eyes, I'm nobody. I'm saying the same hurt experience in four people can produce four different responses. And each one of us has a natural tendency. And it's important for us to understand our natural tendency so we know that when something unpleasant happens, what would be our normal response, the most natural response? Now, I talk about in God we can handle these responses as quickly as possible, but still there is a natural tendency. For instance, for me, my natural tendency is still fear that I might have offended the person, even though the person offended me. I might be afraid that the friendship might be over, that something will affect the future, that I would have this worry or fear. So that's my natural tendency. My natural tendency is not anger. My natural tendency is not ashamed. Oh, I'm ashamed of myself. And uh, my natural tendency is not uh, sadness, it's not anger, it's not shame, but it's fear. That I found it many times that I'm afraid people might have negative feelings, I'm afraid it has destroyed the relationship. That's my natural response. So each one of us has a different natural response. So you know next time when something happens, what your natural responses are. Now, what, when I say that there is a natural response for a person, it doesn't mean we'll say, from now on I'm always respond with fear. For instance, I will try to overcome my fear to tell myself, I've done my best and God is pleased with me. I have no reason to be afraid and tell myself I don't have to be afraid. I can have confidence. Now, actually, I have confidence in God, but at the same time, I'm afraid of breaking human relationship. That's one part of my fear. But when I realize it, then I'm careful to watch for it, so I will stop it. That's my point. When we know our tendency, like people who have tendency to be angry, then they watch the anger. When they are about to anger, it's better to go out somewhere and, you know, take a deep breath and take a walk and then come back calmer. Because he realized that he has this tendency. So to understand our natural tendency is to prevent this emotion to take over us, to destroy relationship, to affect our, our relationship with people. So the main goal is not to build on it. The main goal is to take care of it be, be, before it becomes serious. Okay, now if someone says 
this is my natural tendency, therefore I'm always like this. Then he is saying, I will stay in this condition. Natural emotions are our natural reaction, and whenever we let that control us, it will become sin. Anger, you know, out of control, it will become sin. So it's something we have to watch to prevent. If anyone <coughs> take it for granted, I always respond with anger, then he's falling into sin. He let his emotion control us. So emotions are natural response. It's your natural response. And then when you realize it, you stop it or take care of it. It's not to stop it, take care of it. Like for instance, someone offended you and you say it is his fault. I have apologized, I haven't done anything wrong, so I don't have reason to be angry. And then you take care of that, then you won't become angry. So that's the point to stop it. Not to say, I have that natural tendency, therefore I continue to be angry. And uh, any of this tendency, you know, we let it out of control, go out of control, would be destructive in life. So, so I'm not. I'm telling you, you be aware of that to prevent it to destroy your life. Prevent it from hurting you and other people around you. That's the main point. Suppression of feeling doesn't mean the person doesn't have feelings. It just, he doesn't realize he has the feelings. He has anger, he suppresses so he doesn't cry out. But inside him, he's very angry. He, he for instance, Everyone around him is more powerful than he is, so he cannot say anything. So he suppresses anger, but inside the anger becomes even stronger. But he thinks he has no anger. So suppression could mean he suppresses it and, and, and it doesn't come out. It also means he didn't realize that he has this feeling. Now the question is how to heal, bring healing to suppression of feelings. Suppressed feeling would hurt the person. Physically, emotionally, spiritually. Because suppressed feeling will cause the person to be unhappy inside, angry inside, sad inside. So inside is all the, you know, all this untaken care of feelings. So it, it can hurt the person and hurt the person spiritually because he, he would have problem praying to God. He would have problem to be joyful and free. So when people suppress the feeling, it actually makes the person uh, unhealthy and also distant. It's very hard to communicate with such a person. Now I want to distinguish two things. Like for me, you can see me laugh, but you don't see me angry that much. Because I, I can handle it so fast, you don't even detect my anger. Now, sometimes I might not be able to handle it right away. It might come out a little bit, and then immediately I will take care of it already. If someone offended me, immediately I say, okay, that is his fault. I don't have to be angry. I don't have to uh, I be affected by him. And then I say, it's okay, I can have compassion on the person and love the person and forgive the person. And then just, just let it go. Sometimes it can go so fast that I, I was not even hurt by the person. So my main goal to train people is not to be hurt by people. Now, but people with suppressed feeling, what I mean is they have anger. Now, for me, I handle it so that the anger just go away. I, I don't feel a need to be angry. But some people, they, they, they're very angry with the person, but they would, ah, I cannot show the anger. I cannot speak to him with anger. And then they, go home and they're angry with themselves and they keep blaming the person and keep being angry with the person. This is suppressed feeling. And after a while, when they don't handle it, they gradually lose their feelings. They don't feel anymore. But inside, there is still this destructive feelings. They don't feel that anymore. I know people, they said that they could not cry anymore. So, and then they lose feelings, and people like this, it's very hard to experience the Holy Spirit. Because their feelings are blocked. They cannot go freely to come in front of God. They, it's very hard for them to accept the love of God. For people like that, it's very hard to have friendship and very, with people, and very hard to have friendship with God. So it has all kinds of bad results. How can that be healed? The person has to realize he has such a tendency. 
and to admit that as a problem and ask God to forgive and help him and then learn to respond and understand his feelings. But I don't mean he respond with anger. He understand, oh, he says something like this, I have anger and then I have to take care of it. Now he might start with the good feelings. For instance, he sees something good. Then he learned to thank God, hallelujah, I can laugh. So the first thing he can learn is to laugh, to rejoice, to sing, to dance. This will help him to be, not to be, uh, that he won't hold back his sad feelings, his happy feelings. So he, his happy feelings can come out. And then, when it comes to uh, the other feelings, then he needs to be aware, yes, I have anger. And admit to himself, yes, I have anger. Now I have anger, what can I do? And then handle it. That way he becomes aware of his feeling and then he can handle it. Now to be aware of feeling is very helpful to handle the problem. Let me tell you one situation I have in my chaplaincy training. One time, one of our, you know, we only have a small group of uh, students, about six students, I forgot, about six or seven. And one of the students, one time, in one of our group time, group time, he used foul language. He used foul, foul language. And then in the one-to-one -one session with the teacher, the teacher asked me, what was your feeling? when he used foul language. And at that time, I just stopped. And then I think, I try to recall, what was my feeling at that time? And because I was trained, feeling is not saying he was wrong. That's not feeling, that's a thinking. I was trained to understand that is not, you know, that I should not respond when he was wrong. But I responded and I said to the teacher, I said, I guess I was angry. And the teacher stood up, reached out to me, and shook my hand. Congratulations. You can understand, you can know your feeling. He said, most Chinese hold their feelings back, especially a pastor, hold their feelings back. They say, I have no feeling. The reason why it's good to know my feeling. Then, from then on, if I'm angry or I'm happy about anything, I understand it, I know it, and then I can take care of it. I use an, another illustration. One time I was visiting a patient, and I was bored, because the patient did not respond much. The patient, when she talked, was very soft, and I really had to pay attention to what she was saying, and what she was saying was, you know, it's too hard to understand and this she didn't say much. I had to keep asking her to help her to talk. And I felt boring. You know, I felt bored. And then I realized I was bored with the sick patients. And then I said, even though it was not evangelism, one day when I stand in front of God, if I was bored when I visited the patients, it was still a sin. It was still a sin because I did not respect the person. So immediately I said, I want to change it. I want to learn to pay attention to the person. So I made myself, I told myself, I want to pay attention to the person because I want to follow God. So I paid attention. From then on, when I noticed I was bored, I told myself, pay attention to the person. Respect the person. So my, when I realized my feelings, I can learn to change it overcome it, and then I can become a better person. That is the reason to become aware of our feelings. Now we go back to the situation. Rachel, now we do this in our way, because this is what we want to do with the video. We want to do it again. We want to do it again. Now, so at that point when your mother was angry with you, you felt the same as you. Okay. What was the dominant feeling at that time? Okay, the dominant feeling was uh, being falsely accused. Accused? Yeah, because it's not like she heard what you were saying. It's not, it's not like she misunderstood me somehow. Well, 
I think it can be a form, a form of, I can say, yeah, she misjudged. Okay. She misjudged me. Okay. Yeah, falsely accusing. Because she didn't know what was happening, then she, she made a conclusion. Of which she didn't know what was happening. Okay. Yes. Now, so, now, you're so, now, so you have, thinking that she misjudged you. But what was your feeling? Um, okay, my feeling, I was very disappointed by the way in which she, she spoke. Like I was hurt by, by the expression she gave <coughs> towards me at that time. Yes, I was very hurt and disappointed. Yeah. So, um, now, did that feel last for a long time? Um, okay. The feeling it lasted a few Yeah, it lasted for, for like for that day. Because that day, because because of what has happened, I mean actually I was having uh, many emotions at that time. Many many emotions. Many emotions. Yeah, because of the of, of the event, because of what has happened. This made me to be shocked. And then on top of that, my mother came now. She brought about now the other things which made me to be unhappy. Uh, to be yeah. No, unhappy. Yeah. I like to be unhappy. Unhappy? Yes, yes. Whereby, like, even that day, you know, I couldn't, uh, that day I couldn't eat. That day you? Yeah, I couldn't eat. I, I, I couldn't eat. Couldn't eat. Yeah. Like, like, I recall it was in the evening. So from there I just said, okay, I just went to bed. I was like, I was just laying down on the bed. Down the bed and, yeah, just to deal a little bit. Because it was hard for me to do anything like actually. It's more like I was paralyzed, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything. Even just to give someone I, I I had lost the concern. The sort of doing anything. So I just felt like let me just sleep. There was nothing I can do. I don't think so. I will see them tonight. Yeah. So you we were feeling sad when you can eat, you feel sad for the rest of the day. Okay. Now, for him, this is something in the past. But let me ask you, does that affect you today? Does it affect you have long-term effect on you, for your energy, for your level? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all. It's already gone. It's already gone. Yeah, it's already gone. Because even my mother, she has this, this thing, this, this, uh, this character, whereby even if you open her right now, she can get angry for that time. Like she can get separated for that time. But after some time, you find like this person is like, this thing has never happened. Yeah, even sometimes she, she has a very strong character. She, she's not someone that easily get angry for this way of But if it happens that she's, she's offended, uh, she will find a way of dealing with it. To an extent that even after 18 minutes, you, you can come to her and then you you be just looking to her as if like nothing has happened. Okay. That's the way she is. So even if something there, there are some misunderstandings, uh, if, I mean if you don't talk about it, she will she will forget it. Okay. She will forget it. Okay. okay. So she can forget things easily. Okay? Now, uh, if we go back to that situation, uh, when we saw that you were sad because of you were being misunderstood. Let me ask you, did anything like that happen recently, not with her, but with other people that misunderstand you or accuse you, would you have similar feelings that come up? Were you accused wrongly sometimes and then it hurts you? Has that something, has it happened after that time? Okay. You mean a scenario where it happened with somebody else, not my mother, right? Not your mother, yeah. other people. Okay. Yeah. Um, as long as we live in this, in, in this life, yeah, as human, beings, as human beings, we are not perfect. As people, we are not perfect. So it happens. It happens like someone can, can, can give you a, a judgment which is false. Yeah. So with me, it's just that I have a way, if, if, I'm, if I'm upset with something, like I didn't maybe like the way somebody has talked to me, 
I will, I will not just, it's not like from a, okay, I'll, it's just that I will take time. I will take time to, 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 what to say? Uh, yeah, I will take time for my emotions, the emotions of hurt just to subside and then also to look for the time whereby I can, I can have enough time to talk to the person and how, that can see how I have hurt. Yeah, and that from there is done. That from there is done. I just, even if somebody is, somebody is not listening, I just say, okay, this person is unable to listen, so let me just leave the person and then, yeah, I have a real soul to just, from there I will just find it like wrong. Bye bye, it's like nothing is happening. You mean when you don't face the person and then you think it's gone? Um, okay, one thing that I'm saying is this. Like, what, what, when I'm hurt, like let's say a, a, a similar scenario has happened. Okay, now, now he's, in this case, because he's not affected by a situation in war, although there could be some underlying uh, effect. So I asked him, you know, so does it affect him recently if anyone accused him wrongly? Then we can talk about those recent things that is affecting him and then to lead him to try to cope with the problem. So, uh, if someone talks about something distant and it's not affecting them, we still can apply that to recent events instead of affecting him. Uh, but at this point, because this is not affecting him, so we, we're not going to go through this uh, counseling. Basically, I just want you to realize that, once you realize that, he has feelings. So realize that he has feelings that need to be taken care of. And we listen to him. We respond to him. That's the main thing. That we understand his feelings. That we can respond to his feelings. Okay? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to pretend that this is a recent event. And then we want to counsel him to take care of it. Now, in this situation, what can I do was trying to understand, explore his feeling at that time, and then how he handled it. For instance, now in your case, you just sleep over it and then you forget about it. That's something good about you. But I also want to find out if you have hidden, hidden some of your feelings. Are some of your feelings hidden or not? Now, if that's how you are, you sleep over it and then you're okay. Uh, there's a chance that you have really, it has brought healing to you and you know, and you forget about it. Uh, but there's a chance that you hide the feelings and you, that you feel unhappy about yourself and you feel suppressed, it could happen like that. Then I want to help you understand the feeling and then how to handle it and to accept that the mother misunderstood you and so she said something unpleasant to you and then you can have compassion on your mother because your mother did not understand you so she spoke negative words and you and so you could accept her and have compassion on her and then forgive her of the negative feelings. That way, you know, and then come to the Lord and pray so that the heart is free, fully free of the feeling that you are not affected by and then you are set free. So the process is to understand our feelings and to use God's word, God's love, and have compassion on the person to forget about, to, to still not be forgotten, to let go of the hurt experience and to forgive her, and to let go, and then to say, I'm loved by God, I can be happy, I can be joyful, I don't have to be affected by what she said. So that's how I would counsel you to take care of her. Now, if a person comes to me with strong emotion, maybe the first thing is not to counsel, just to pray with the person, to calm down the person. And then, after the person is calmed down and is ready, then I will explore the feelings whether they suppress and does he understand his feelings and then to use the word of God, the word of God to guide him, to accept that he's loved by God so he can have peace, he's important, he's loved by God, even what his mother said to him doesn't take away his 
important and his value. So he will believe, yes, I'm important, I'm loved by God, I'm precious, and at the same time can understand the mother has been, has misunderstood him, and so has anger. And so he can accept his mother's anger and, and, and forgive his mother and bless, uh, love his mother, accept his mother. That way, his own feeling is taken care of. The feeling toward the mother is taken care of. So he won't be accepted. So every feeling, you need to go to accept and comfort him, pray with him, and then go into you know, counseling to help him accept that he's precious, one thing to believe he's precious, what the mother said will not take away your value, your importance. And then you can accept your mother and forgive and then uh, let go and accept that he has, she has said something that hurts you. So let go of that and forgive her and bless her and pray for her and and let go of the situation. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we counsel yes. So that he will not be affected. If we can take care of all the situation in the past and take care of each one of this and not be affected by the past, then our, we won't have suppressed feeling. And then we can continue to have peace and joy and freedom and believe that we are precious. <coughs> so that's the main thing, main goal of counseling, to help the person face the past hurts to take care of it and to let go.